Hello, welcome to the self learning platform by Dr. Shishma Singh. Today, in Unit 3 Types, we are going to start our lecture with topic framework of rights. Rights are the essential conditions of human personality. The development of human personality depends on the system of rights available to the individuals. Different state systems recognize different rights. Rights available to the American would be different from those available to Indians. A liberal democratic society would give primacy to different rights than a socialist society. That is why we have a clarification of rights, moral and legal, legal into civil, political, economic and social. Rights incorporated in the constitution of the land are called fundamental rights. Rights being basic conditions necessary for the development of human personality have to be made available to the individuals of all the states. The UN Declaration of Human Rights serves as an inspiration and as agenda for the states to recognize and maintain for their respective people. Now let us move to the next point, rights of the people. A general framework of the major rights available to the people can be briefly summed up as under. Right to life is a basic right without which all other rights are meaningless. This right means that the state guarantees the protection of life protection against any injury, even suicide is considered a crime. Right to equality has numerous aspects. Equality before law, equal protection of law, prohibition of any sort of discrimination, social, economic or political. Protective discrimination as enshrined in the Constitution of India is an integral part of the right to equality. Right to freedom, like right to equality, has several aspects. Freedom of speech, of press, of assembly, of association, of movement, of residence, of adapting a vocation. That these freedoms are to be exercised within reasonable restrictions has been the characteristic feature of this right granted to the Indians by the Constitution. Right to freedom of religion, conscience, faith is another right available to the indigenous. Religion is a matter of faith and the voice of one's conscience and as such is given to the citizens in the present day states. This right does not curtail secularism in so far as religion is accepted as something personal and religion and public life are not allowed to intermix. Right to education is another important right without which the development of man's personality becomes impossible. An uneducated man cannot lead a meaningful life. Literacy being a social curse should be reduced or removed. The state should take up the responsibility of promoting education. Certain economic rights include the right to work, right to social security and rest and leisure. 
with work and without material secure, security an individual is unstable to enjoy the fruits of other rights right to property too is an economic right which means the right to process and inherit property it is regarded as an important right in liberal democracies there are political rights of the indigenous it is these rights which make indigenous full fledged citizens among these the right to franchise to contest election to hold public office to form political parties are some which need mention the constitution of india provides a list of rights to its citizens these are called the fundamental rights and these include right to equality right to freedom right against exploitation right to free, freedom of religion culture and educational rights and right to constitutional remedies the last one is the important right in so far as this right ensures guarantees for all the other rights the liberal democratic system ensures the primacy of political rights over social rights and of social rights over the economic the order is reversed in socialist society economic rights social rights and political rights for a liberal democrat right to freedom is more important than right to equality right to property is more important than right to work economic security is more important than economic equality economic rights in such societies are reduced to the right to protection of property to workable equality within the framework of private property system not to be exploited by the employer to unemployment allowance in socialist society right to work precedes the right to education right to education precedes the right to hold independent opinion now let us move to the next those social conditions without which no man can seek to be his best self they are social because they are never against social welfare they were not there before the emergence of society the state only recognizes and protects rights by maintaining them rights are never absolute absolute rights are a contradiction in terms they are dynamic in nature in so far as their content change according to place time and conditions they go along with duties in fact duties are prior to rights the exercise of rights implies the exercise of duties if laski were to give rights to the individual he would give them in this order right to work right to be paid adequate wages right to reasonable hours of labor right to education right to choose one's governors followed by other rights laski's argument is that without granting economic rights first an individual cannot enjoy his political rights political liberty is meaningless without economic equality where there are great inequalities the relationship between men is that of the master and the slave equally important but lower in order is the right to education education alone helps and individual exercise these other rights properly with the economic and the social at one's disposal there is a great likelihood of the individual exercising his political rights to the right earnestness
now let us move to the next point that is theory of human rights as rampal has very rightly stated that human rights were not born of man but they were born with them they are not as much a result of the efforts of the united nations as emanations from basic human dignity they are human rights because they are with human beings as human beings human rights may generally be defined as those rights which are inherited to our nature and without which we cannot live as human beings they are essentially because they help us to use and develop our facilities talents and intelligence they base themselves on mankind's increasing demand for a life in which the inherent dignity and worth of each human being will receive not only protection but also respect as well human rights lies at the root of all organizations they permeate the entire un charter in the preamble of the un charter there is a determination to affirm faith in fundamental human rights in the dignity and worth of the human person in the equal rights of men and women and the nation large and small there is a reference to the promotion of universal respect for human rights in the charters article 13 55 62 68 and 76 the commission of human rights working under the un economic and social council after spending about two and a half years under the chairmanship of roosevelt drafted what is known as the universal declaration of human rights when the un general assembly approved this declaration on december 10 1948 the day came to be celebrated as a human right day among the 30 articles that are to are a part of the declaration of human rights there is a list of traditional rights from article 3 to 15 these rights include right to life liberty to security freedom from arbitrary arrest and to a fair trial to equal protection of law freedom of movement to nationality to seek asylum etc there are other important rights contained in article 16 to 21 these include equal rights to men and women to marry to form the family to property to basic freedom such as those thought and expression right to peaceful assembly and association as well as a share in the government's own country there are economic rights enshrined in the article from 22 to 27 these include right to work protection against unemployment just remuneration right to form trade unions right to have rest and leisure to adequate standard of living education and of participation in the cultural life of the country article 28 29 30 ensure social or international order duties towards the community wherein alone the free and full development of man's personality is possible and the guarantees of these rights respectively the universal declaration of human rights is the first segment of the international bill of human rights it is followed by the international covenant on economic cultural and social rights the international covenant on civil and political rights and the optional protocol all adopted in 1966
now let us sum up the unit rights are social claims necessary for the development of human personality these belong to the individuals and they provide conditions without which they cannot seek to be themselves they are social given by the society and secured by the state even the state cannot take them away from the individuals they reflect a particular stage of the development of society as the society changes so do the character and content of rights theories regarding the rights reflect partially treatment about their meanings origin and nature the theory of natural rights is correct so long as it lays emphasis on the fact that the rights are natural because they are in the nature of social claims likewise the legal theory of rights speaks the truth in so far as it makes the state and the guarantor of our rights rights are of numerous kind those rights which are available to human beings include right to life equality security of person and property freedom education work freedom of religion to vote to hold public office the liberal democratic societies lay more emphasis on personal and political rather than economic and social rights the socialist society advocate the opposite arrangement of rights laski as a liberal leaning towards the left considers rights essential for the individual development but grants economic rights followed by social and political rights the un declaration of human rights provides a list of basic rights available to human beings as human beings now let us wind up today's lecture and thank you so much for your attention